name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're going to talk email templates. Email templates are used by a number of our applications, probably most heavily in contract to close. So that's the one that we're going to use as our example. But everything that we say applies equally to every application that supports email templates. Please keep that in mind and let's get started. So we're going to take a look down here on the custom templates menu and we're going to find email templates. We're going to click on that. And we're going to see that we've got a list of, in this case, 73 different templates, one of which is a copy of one of our system templates and is called AAA Example Template. Really original. Let's go take a look and see what that has. When you edit an email template, you've got a template name, first field that comes up. You've got some file statistics. Now, these are holdovers from the system template that I copied because that's a file-based system. We've got a list of fields that are available for use in our template. Now, those are based on the list of resource types that are available within this application for generating email. There are a number of real estate related ones in this example, um, each of which has a long list of fields that you could select from. So for example, the contract itself has a long list of fields that you might use in your email. Rather than jump to the body, we're going to jump to the bottom and talk about the buttons. We've got the save button if you make any changes. We could copy this template. This would generate a, a full copy. This is how we got this one. We went into that other one and copied it. We can toggle the view to XHTML. Right now we've got what they call a WYSIWYG view into it. This is basically what the email is going to look like, except filled in. If I want to toggle to the XHTML view, I get to see the underlying structure of what that email is. And I could, I could ch make changes here, or I could click on it again, and I can make changes here and use the formatting. So for example, if I wanted to bold submission and then go take a look and see what that did, all it did was add the B tags for bold around the word submission. And that's something that the, the editing tool that we have does. So, um, let's go in there and make that unbold and go back to where we were. Now, we see that we've got, um, sorry, uh, continuing our trek across the bottom of the buttons, we have a delete button. Um, if we wanted to wipe this template out, we could. Now, anybody who's using this template is using it by name. So it's important that you keep track of whatever your application does for identifying which templates you're using. In contract to close, uh, that can get rather involved because as you see, there are dozens and dozens of, of email templates and there are literally hundreds of potential tasks that might use them. Then there's the cancel button, usual cancel button, it unselects, uh, just like clicking on that. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about what's in here. When we identify a field that we want to do mail merge on, we're using curly brackets. It's a very simple little mechanism um, we do this processing on the server and then we submit it back to um, submit it back to the, the browser when you have the, your email page or it could be your bulk mailer, it could be your uh, single emailer. Um, but those will be filled in. Those will all be filled in if there are values for it. If there aren't, you will see these curly brackets in the email and go, oh, wait, I needed to type something in or I needed to select something. Um, if we do our templates right, there shouldn't be any unpopulated fields in there. So uh, here we have agent first name and agent last name. Those, understandably enough, come out of the real estate agent that's associated with this. Um, and the contract name was part of the contract field that we just saw. So a couple of notes about this. Um, if you're just doing regular stuff and you're not an X HTML expert, um, just Edit your, edit your email here and format it the way that you want. It's going to put a bunch of stuff in under the hood and it will work just fine. If you really want to go in and tune it and you know the difference between HTML and XHTML, feel free to do your editing straight in here. Now, there are two situations where you'll have to do your editing straight in here. This insert tag is a custom tag that we created for inserting, in this case, a common footer. Um, the only thing that should be in there, there should be no formatting, no nothing, just the name of 
another template and there is a template called agency footer that if I want to change my footer on all of my emails that go out of the system, I would go there and change that and then it would automatically um, be included at generation email generation time. Now, another field that we have, and this is alluded to down here, is something called the resource block. Now, resource block is not used in contract to close, but it is used in another application we have called teacher gifts. So I'm going to change applications over to wackadoo.org where we have a charitable application that we've got for um, sending emails to teachers with a list of charitable gifts. So let's we're going to change applications from contract to close to teacher gifts. Now, I am here on the email templates page just like I was there, but there's only one in this case because this is this sample data is much smaller. Um, the gift notice email it says, okay, great, hello, teacher, first name, teacher, last name, same stuff that we just saw, just different entities that we have to pick field names from. So, for example, the teacher has, you know, a certain amount of information we can do. Now, in the middle of this, we want to generate a table of all of the different gifts that are, uh, have been given to this teacher by the teacher's students or by the parents of the students. And the way that we do that is we go into the XHTML, and you can see there's all kinds of formatting and things in here. But right here, we have a resource block tag. Again, this is a fake HTML tag that we made up that you would never, ever, ever, if you know HTML, put in the middle of a, of a table. Um, and it, in fact, would not work in the middle of a table, except we're creating a template. And what this tells us is fill in for every resource that we have, fill in a new block here for each gift. So we're going to do a query that sorts by teacher and then by um, and then by uh, student name. And then what will happen is every student's gift is going to come in and get dropped into this structure in a repeated fashion and there will be a table in the middle of this email that gets sent to the teacher. So that's the kind of thing that you can do with resource block. Pardon the interruption, but we're going to freeze the video right here and we're going to have a little bit of an insert here for something that we missed when we did this video the first time. In the applications that support resource block, and there are three of them, there is a single entity that you can do this resource block on. In this example, we're talking about sorting by teachers because this is the teacher gifts application. It makes sense for that to be the one. So the query that's used to generate the data that's used to generate this email has to be sorted by teacher ID first. That's how we know. We go through and we say, okay, is the teacher ID the same? And as long as it is, we keep inserting in the, when we see that teacher ID change then we bring in a new template, we start filling in gifts in their table. And then when we see that change again, so it's that kind of a loop. Each application that supports it, and as I said, there were three of them. There's teacher gifts, sponsor care, and donor care. Each of them has a single field that you can do this on. Teachers, it's teacher ID. For sponsor care, it is the sponsor ID field. And in the donor care application, it is the member ID, which is the under the hood name for the donor record in the database. So keeping that in mind, the resource block field that we just discussed has all of the power that we just talked about, but it's only on that single first sort field in your query. If that doesn't make sense to you, give us a call. We'd be happy to sit down and talk to you about it if you think that you need to do something else on that. We now return you to your regularly scheduled video. Thanks. Um, again, it's not used in contract to close, which we're going to go back to. Now we're back in contract to close, and uh, we don't use that in any of our templates here because it's not, uh, we don't have the business use case for it. So um, we've talked about the two non-standard uh, tags. What I want to do is take a look at that footer. We had agency footer. We're going to look at that now. Um, and that's just thanks, first name, last name, you know, transaction, what, whatever it is that you want to put in here. Um, you know, email address, phone, whatever you want to put in there. You'll see that we've, we've formatted that one green. Um, so this would be where you would go to change it, and then that would change it system-wide for this application. Other applications don't have the same uh, kind of problem. So 
We have talked about non-standard HTML tags, insert and resource block, and we've talked about putting fields inside of your email uh, from different kinds of resources. So that kind of covers everything about email templates. To summarize, um, you can do pretty much what you want with HTML in your email templates. Um, and three, make sure that you don't mess up those two custom tags, the insert tag and the resource block tag, if they are used in your email templates. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us directly. You can find our contact information on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info. Thank you.